hopefully, if we've played our cards right, uh, we should be able to say hello to Loretta and to Leo down in Packington Street. Hello, are you there? Hello, coming in, coming in loud and clear at Packington Street. Uh, well, hang on, I think that's Loretta and not Leo. Yeah, I reckon that was Loretta. <laughs> well, Good morning, Loretta. It is, it is. Morning, fellas. It is just me. Oh, okay, well. Because the fantastic Leo, I think, might be up a ladder. <laughs> as oh, long as he doesn't have a ladder in his stocking, that's all we're concerned about. Uh, thank you for taking the place of the Deputy Prime Minister. It doesn't get any bigger than that. Well, as you said before, you know, we all know who the movers and shakers are, don't we? Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> how's the crowd uh, swelling down there, Loretta? Because we, uh, we're nearly ready for the... Well, I suppose the, the, the big events, uh, the parade, but um, there's been a lot of activity in preparation for it already taking place, so I imagine there's a lot of people around. There are so many people here. And do you know what's awesome? People in their national dress lined up for cappuccinos, you know, a bit of a latte before they get started. Rob is also uh, in his national dress. He's wearing a pair of shorts and a pair of thongs. <laughs> We're going to get him to put a shirt on soon. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Can I tell you that... Um, what our theme is for this year's Paco Festa? Please do. Let, let us ask a more p a pressing question. Loretta, oh. is there a theme for this year's Paco <laughs> Festa? We want to sound like journos. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thanks so much. So it's about building bridges and passing culture to future generations with a real focus on cultural food, traditional costumes, and of course the dance and music, which is always such an integral part of the time at Paco. Um, do you have a sense of how long this festival has been going on? How many years, sorry? Yeah. Yep. This is the 42nd Paco Festa. So Rob would have spent yeah. his, his 50th birthday at the first one. I don't think so. <laughs> so each year... Now, uh, Leo, Leo has gotten off his ladder. Excellent. Uh, we can say hello uh, to him in a moment. And he's, he's going to jump in with the conversation. Oh, he's got headphones as well. Gee, we've... The budget's ex extended out to two sets of headphones. Um, well, one and a half sets of headphones. <laughs> so, do we have uh, a theme every year? Do we? That say so the bur the build I say burning bridges. The building bridges um, theme this year. Do, is there a theme every year? Is I didn't realise that. Yeah, there's a theme every year, uh, and this one's about building bridges, which I think is really poignant this year. Hmm. Now, yeah, Leo, can you hear us? Are you part of the conversation? Uh, no. Good, no not. Dave's got me on, that's better. Yes, yes, oh, that's there we better. are. Yes, uh, now good, I can hear you. Good morning to our yeah. eminent leader. How are you today? Good today. Yourself, Robert? We've had a discussion about leadership this morning and surprisingly your name didn't pop up, but you've got a chance now to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, There's nothing surprising uh, about that, Rob. No, uh, that's not true. I've, um, I've got you, two sets of headphones on. You have been uh, part of many of these, so you know the importance of this. You work a lot in... The multicultural sector of Geelong, being that Cultura are both uh, connected to Paco Festa and 94.7 The Pulse, but how's this one brewing compared to previous years? Well, this one's brewing very quickly. The street's filling up very quickly, and it's um, it's not like a slow boil. It's it's like a uh, starting to get to a rapid boil now with the amount of people walking up and down the street in bright I must mention bright orange fluoro be safe be seen oh, I Paco the, Festa t-shirts this year I thought it was the Netherlands had turned up yes <laughs> well we were going to bring some carrots <laughs> paint our face. so Leo um, uh, this is obviously uh, something that uh, has happened for 42 years we found out and uh, we know that it's in Packington Street Packington Street is a very long street where is the epicenter uh, the epicenter is the town hall. Mm -hmm. and we're right out the front of the town hall. Um, uh, that's where, when the parade begins, right up the other end of the street. But um, most people congregate around the town hall and then uh, they, they march all the way up to the park. <laughs> so it's a long, so a long street when you think of it that way, when you're walking in, in your traditional costume and usually carrying a few kids and holding up a few signs. So do we start in uh, Geelong West and head for Chilwell or is it the other way around? We start in Geelong West and head for Chilwell, correct, yep. Rob? Right. So yes. uh, for, for, um, for Neil, let's start at the petrol and make your way up to the other end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, 
the, the uh, no, I was going to go <laughs> joke with petrol, but it's okay. Um, so for those who are new to this, uh, we know where the epicenter is. There will be. Uh, we, we might cross over to uh, Leo Rankin on site for a traffic report. Um, what what other closures? Uh, where can people well, not be? There seems to be a few prams at the moment. <laughs> I was thinking more in terms of roads that are closed. Very family friendly uh, view today, isn't it, Loretta? There seems to be lots of lots of children, prams. Lots of prams. Yes, lots of children in prams. Nice. One's coming past now. One even waving to us, Loretta. Look. Uh, are you getting ready for the parade? I'm getting ready for the parade. We've got waving prams. We've got everything. Uh, excellent. <laughs> so it starts at Autumn Street. Is that where the blockage, <laughs> the traffic blockage is, as in you can't yes. get up yes. Paco? Right up the end then. And, and how but far? So the parade starts down at, at Waratah Street. So Waratah is the other journey extreme. journey south. Okay. okay. Yes. So if you are going to Paco Festa, folks, do not try and cross Packington Street between Autumn Street and Waratah Street. The best approach is, obviously, if you can walk is better, but otherwise you're parking yeah. in the side streets. Is that the go? Yeah. That's the go. That's if, the you, if you can get a park because it's starting to fill up pretty quick. Yeah. I think last year we had over 100,000 people attend Paco Festa over yeah. the whole day, which is yeah. pretty amazing. I used more than the grand final, I think, Neil. <laughs> but not, more than a Tay-Tay concert? Yeah, not more than a Taylor Swift concert after <laughs> my experience last <laughs> Sunday night. Uh, <laughs> I, I, used to, I used to live in O'Connell Street, which is the street on which there used to be a pub called The Barking Dog. I can't tell you the name of the pub now because that would be promoting yes. the pub. But I used to live three doors down, and boy, oh boy, did I look forward to the Paco Festa every year. <laughs> not. <laughs> Is that why the barking dog no longer exists now? <laughs> yes, I moved. <laughs> yeah. um, so, um, so, go on, you, go, over. Oh, I was just going to say, the only people brighter than us today, the SES rescue people who have just walked past, <laughs> they've got complete orange. From head to toe. Head to toe. Right, you've only got the top half. Oh, that's a, Yeah, we've got the top half. Yes, I assume there's something. And I do notice that. the flashing 40 sign, so don't walk faster than 40 k's an hour, anybody. <laughs> well, uh, that's, that puts Rob out of the picture because he runs at that point. That uh, <laughs> no, it was mentioned, I, I but I, I need to let people know, if you're intending to go there and you have someone who is uh, a little bit uh, incapacitated physically, please drive as close as you can, drop them off because you're probably not going to park within a kilometre of the epicentre from my experience now. So uh, take that into consideration with your travel time and preparation because uh, the streets fill up very, very quickly indeed. That's right. right. And I'm, I'm just going to give a shout-out to the Geelong Arts Centre who are uh, proudly supporting our broadcast. Excellent. Good on you, Geelong Arts Centre. We love them. Very much so. They know, they know what real art is, getting us to do a broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and interrupting ours, but that's OK. Um, now, I think I'm right in saying next week we have got uh, someone from Echoes of Pink Floyd, it might be the week after, who will be performing at the Geelong Arts Centre very soon. So uh, that's, oh, a, right. that's a show worth looking at. Now, suppose I had never been to a Paco Festa. And I thought yeah. to myself, well, I know at 11 o'clock, uh, Loretta and somebody, I can't remember who is helping Alex. with Alex, oh, there Alex. you go. I didn't see that bit of paper. Um, are going to be doing a description of the parade. Uh, mm, that yes. probably goes half three quarters, something like that. Oh, the full shebang of an hour and a bit Before, more. Oh, it's getting bigger and bigger. Uh, what happens yes. after that, though? What can people expect to see and do if they go to Paco Festa this year? So there are five stages dotted all in and around the precinct. And about every 15 or 20 minutes, there's a different cultural group or band who are playing. So they, they start to start about 12.30 and they go right through to 5 p.m. So if you're at home and thinking, ah, you know, I really need to clean that cutlery drawer and I don't have time till 3 o'clock, that's fine. Get on down here about 3 o'clock. Now, although the entertainment drops off at 3 o'clock, I understand, um, because of the, uh, the presenter that we have doing the radio show at that point. Yes, uh, that's that's me. Oh. That's, that's me. That's when I kick on. Please come down and there's plenty to see before three, but please come down and uh, check us out at three o'clock. I'll be there with Doug Morell and we'll be talking to cultural uh, root, uh, cultural youth, um, uh, roots arts communities of Geelong uh, music. Liz Moore is going to drop in the Maskell Love Band with Peter Maskell. We'll be talking to uh, Baraka, who's a uh, hip hop. No, the oh. other one. Baraka. Yeah. Uh, talking about hip-hop and R&B music. Then we're talking to yeah. uh, Balladeer about uh, 
different type of music. There's so much going on in the space, so get on down there um, all day, but certainly after 3 o'clock, I'd love to see you. And Liz Moore's going to be there. Liz Moore's going to be there. Is that the one from Victoria or New yeah. South Wales, Liz Moore? I don't know. So good. Yeah. Anyway. Now, remember that we do have our text line. We do. I've been today. everywhere, man, commenting on that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 0488 We Now we I've got to go because people need to take selfies with me. Okay, well, go and do as that. As they do. Um, someone's saying, please That's take it off cool. delay. We can't oh, do that because they're going live. Sorry, folks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, we, we've got to get going to set up. Yeah. Okay, you go and do that. Go, Dave's giving the call up. Thanks, All right, well, you go and do get that. Off. Get off, get off. We will, uh, okay, Dave. We will, t- we will talk later. Have a good time. Talk later. See you later. See you guys. Bye. And that is uh, Loretta and Leo live from Paco Festa. What a big day it's going to be. Get on down there. It is uh, wonderful. And please don't eat before you go because you will uh, be completely blown away by the quality of the food from all over the world of origin. Cooked here in Geelong, of course. It doesn't come from all over the world, but uh, its origins certainly do. And that is one of the great parts about living in this town. Neil, I know you love a good restaurant and a good feed and multicultural Geelong is magnificent for that. The other thing that struck me as being the uh, the irony of the first people you are speaking to today. The irony? Mm. Let me go back to the list, Neil, mm. um, and I'll see if I can get to the bottom of the irony. Um, who was it again? Uh, you said that the first group you're talking to is cultural youth. Yes. What an extraordinary contrast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good point. We'll get to the bottom and we'll find out uh, you may learn about something what that about, actually means. You may learn something about culture and you may learn something about youth. Correct. Yeah, that'd be good. It'd be nice to get them on the same page. But folks, it is a really good event, isn't it? It, it there's no doubt. It's yeah. just, it's just a ripper. It makes you very proud to be part of Geelong. We talk a lot about uh, surf coast tourism, uh, the industry that's coming up, our beautiful foreshore. But this event is right up there with uh, anything that happens in the town. We get sucked in a bit with sport here, Neil and I, but this is a wonderful cultural event that the city should be very proud of. I was watching the televisual display unit in my home last night uh, and caught uh, the national broadcaster presenting the news. And the man whose name eludes me, no, it's Paul Higgins. Oh, yes. When he started off with the weather for today, he said, now tomorrow, the weather for the Paco Festival down in Geelong West. So it's even being talked about on the televisual news. There you go. That is a big, big thing and uh, makes you awfully proud to be in Geelong. So get on down, Paco Festa. It's on now and it'll be going till five o'clock this afternoon.